Quite apart from the fact that uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg, Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg, oh, and you must get hold of a Sir Jacob mug, uh, with part of, part of my new merch, which is coming out shortly. So look out for a Sir Jacob Reese mug. But quite apart from the fact that he can't remember the name of his guest, let me remind you, the name of his guest is Liz Webster, and she heads the Save British Farming campaign. And she's a fiery individual who tries valiantly to put her case forward despite the fact that Jacob Rees-Mogg talks over her, interrupts her, and it's a, it's a very enjoyable exchange to observe. But there's some fundamental issues in the exchange which I think are worth flagging up. So I, I'll, I'll play you the majority of it. She's talking about the problem of a lack of checks when food is brought in through the port of Rotterdam into the UK. Rees-Mogg says, oh, well, anything that is coming from the EU must have been checked in order to get into the EU. Well, not, as she points out, if the final destination is Britain. And because Britain hasn't got its checks in place, a lot of extraordinary food, apologies for those people who don't like me using the word extraordinary, a lot of extraordinary food is coming in, substandard, is destroying the competitive food which should be produced in the UK. It's undercutting those prices. And it's bringing in not only this sort of cheaper, shoddier food, but diseases. And lower standards. It's decimating the British the, the natural indigenous British farming, which is already in trouble anyway because of Brexit. And this is making it so much worse. Uh, Liz points out, even if we accepted Bre Brexit, we didn't need to have the agreements which ripped up all the uh, standards which had hitherto been applied about trade between Britain and the EU. All of this was ripped up by Boris. I don't think it's Boris who was the problem. I think it's Lord Frost. Lord Frost is my bogeyman. And, um, you, you know, the, and, and Rhys Mogg simply will not accept the, the fact which Liz Webster points out very clearly. She is the authority. She is the farmer. Rhys Mogg is not the farmer. Rhys Mogg is, 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 is a media presenter and sometime MP. And illegal meat, which she comes across on a daily basis in her work as a campaigner and in her, and in her work as a farmer itself, on her family farm, illegal meat is a risk to human health. And we, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know, and short of putting in proper regulation, short of uh, adding more red tape, I don't know how we stop this illegal meat coming in. We're looking for food security. And instead, in the interest of short-term savings and absurd ideology, very much like the Corn Laws, we've welcomed the very worst form of Brexit. Uh, Michael Gove during the Brexit campaign, claimed that he was going to introduce 50,000 customs officers. They don't exist. They haven't appeared. This was a foolish, vain, pointless promise that has never been made good. They haven't been hired. And we have wave upon wave of second-rate stuff coming unchecked into our country because <clears throat> people like Rhys Mogg think that Europe is going to do our job for them. Or, yeah, you know, Europe is going to do our job for us. It's not. And all this is... Look, uh, rather than me summarising, look at the actual piece, because Liz Webster is spectacular here, and Jacob Rees-Mogg really does end up... I, I, I can't think which, which piece of um, uh, farming produce would be smeared all over his face. Probably eggs. He, he ends up with eggs all over his face. It's not actively dangerous.
Um, well, it's not as simple as that, uh, and it never is. The reality is that anything coming via Rotterdam is able to get in without any checks. And obviously, we're being penalised with checks. The answer is to agree to a veterinary agreement, align, dynamically aligned with EU regs. Well, that just and we get rid of the barriers or the, most of them. But what you want to do is rejoin the EU. That's basically always been your well, position, hasn't it? Because for food and farming, I mean, it is... Got, let's have the wonderful picture from your family farm that came up when there was a campaign the second referendum. Put it on the screen now. There we go. Yes. That was your family farm. So we know you want us to be effectively part of the EU. Yeah. And if we align to their veterinary rules, we might as well not have left. That'd be completely pointless. And we wouldn't get the advantage of cheaper food for our consumers. The thing is, Jacob, that we've left and we failed to remain. And I accept that we have Brexit. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a denier of reality. Um, but now things have moved on and we're experiencing Brexit. And many of my friends in farming who did believe in Brexit have come around to realise that these trade deals are undercutting us with substandard foods and also the, the complete the food, unfairness. Oh, hold on. The EU food isn't substandard. No, no, the EU food isn't substandard. That's a different argument. I just explained anything coming via Rotterdam, it's a huge port. Coming it, here, including it, it illegal costs, food. If it goes and the illegal Rotterdam, food it has is to meet here. EU regulations. And that's why newborn illness if is gone, going through the roof. If it's gone into Rotterdam, it's met EU regulations. It can't go without meeting them. No, because we've left all of no, them. No, no, no. But Jacob, you can't just argue over me. You I, need to let me speak. I am letting you speak. But if you want me to be on the show, you need to let me speak. Things that are transported through the EU have to meet EU regulations. No, they don't. Yes. Because we've left. We've left all of the organisations, and we didn't have to. That was a decision no, by your friend, Boris not. Johnson. We didn't have to leave all of the, the certain bodies which ensured that we were within the security system of the food system. But we've left mm -hmm. all of that. So a friend of mine who imports uh, foods imported some starch from India, which came via Rotterdam, and it was absolutely full of bugs because nobody's checking anything Good. that comes in here, Good. including... Hold on of illegal you're, meat, you're, you're which is full of bugs, not refrigerated, mm -hmm. and an absolute risk to human health. You, you, but this is products being imported illegally. As you know perfectly well, goods that come from the EU into the UK through a legal channel a lot of them are, coming are now from going to Europe. be checked. If goods are coming in illegally, that's an entirely different matter, as you know, but they're evading checks anyway, we, so these checks don't stop illegal we goods, they're nothing have, to do with illegal goods. We didn't goods. have anywhere near this level of illegal, illegal food coming in when we were in, within the body of yes, the European Union. Yes, we did. Meat. We had horse meat coming from Romania. You the must remember meat that scandal. Kill you, Jacob, we just don't like eating horse in this country, uh, but, and it was also okay, the corporations, so, but also nowadays, you wouldn't even know about the horse meat because nobody's checking anything. You, you would because... Every we, label is labels now for men's uh, minced beef, which they packaged in the UK, the, and it doesn't even give you the origin of where that meat the, has come the from. Goods that come in from the EU are tracked right back to the farm, as you know. What I'm saying is that we should trust safe countries, and this includes New Zealand, but it also includes the EU because their products are safe. You're trying to argue about something completely different, which is illegal goods coming into this country, which you try and check in a completely different way. Smuggled meat and goods from India that are pretending to be from the EU we, won't be affected by this change in the regulations. Millions of pounds on white elephant checking facility, which are not going to be used. First of all, we've got a that. labour they shortage. Should, they should be scrapped, those checking facilities. I've just I, I recently come back from Africa, where we, I went from... Botswana through to Zambia, and we had to go through significant checks because of the agricultural risks of spreading disease. We've already got blue tongue in Britain now since Brexit, and it is because blue we've got has this... no relationship with Brexit. In, You're, but, because we've not got any checks, and we've left all of the food security mechanisms within the true. European Union. This simply isn't true. It we is. have kept checks on goods coming in from countries outside the EU, and illegal goods coming in has always been a problem. There's always been an issue with smuggling, and you're trying to conflate the two and blame them on Brexit, which is completely different. But going back to, I mean, you want to argue and argue and argue and hold your position, and that's what you want to do. I'm somebody that's based in reality and working in agriculture. I understand 
food and I you understand want the prices system. for British people for food. No, I, I, do, want, I do I want not. my constituents to buy food at competitive Jacob, world prices. You promised, by, I, you promised the country they would get cheaper food. And they food should is do. more expensive because of Brexit, also other world events. This is, but Brexit has made food more expensive and domestically no, produced this, this food. This is true. We've got a trade deal with Australia which will reduce the cost of food. This is very welcome. This is why I object to this so strongly because this is the British government deciding to put up the cost of food, which is crazy. The farmers you in your that. constituency in Somerset must be jolly upset. No, they're firstly, highly, they're highly firstly, they have lost access to Canada because of Brexit and the trade, the, the trade problems in the trade agreements. They've lost access for all of their cheese. They're the biggest cheese right. producers in Somerset. And secondly, you're saying that you favour Australians coming in, sending us huge yes. amounts of their, their I do, because all to we do, us. all we do and you is subsidise the European Irish, to French have an advantage. and Dutch you want, the, you want the Europeans to have an advantage on us. So we yes. have huge trade barriers exporting to them, and you want them yes, to have a freedom to come in as well tat. and not have the same. Trade barriers not tip don't tat, benefit farmers and they hurt it's consumers. No different to sending your goods. English team on, to play in of, the World Cup with chains on their legs. A lot and of the feet. goods we import from the EU we don't produce. So, what on earth is the point in well, I agree putting with that. penalties so on you French should agree cheese with that we me. don't produce? You should agree with me. The best free trade model to protect our standards and our food security is within the European no. Union in the single market. We should get rid of trade we barriers. Have no we should get rid of trade of barriers for safety. Food. There isn't one advantage There's to Brexit. There's a huge Jacob. advantage. What's that? Cheaper food for British consumers. <laughs> Liz, thank you for coming on. Former Lib Dem candidate Liz Webber coming in to see us. Webster. Webster, sorry. Coming up. Food, in other words, is tracked if it's produced in the EU or if it's bound for an EU final destination. If it's not bound for an EU destination, if it's not being produced in the EU, it's not tracked. It can be any sort of rubbish. And I love the point that Liz made, that we wouldn't know if we had a plate of horse, because the only packaging now that is on our meat is about where the meat has been packaged, not where it originated. And that is part of the Brexit benefits that we can see. As she points out, there are no Brexit benefits. I've asked again and again and again, where are the Brexit benefits? Tell me about a Brexit benefit. Nobody can tell me of any single Brexit benefit. I long for Jacob. Jacob, Jacob, please, on my knees, I beg you, list some Brexit benefits. <laughs> I would love to hear you roll off a list of Brexit benefits like the Mikado on a good day. I've got a little list, just like Rishi's, got a little plan. 